In this series of videos, we're going to be looking into centroids, center of gravity, center of mass, and then their application to calculating the equivalent forces from distributed loading and from fluid pressures. The learning outcomes for this section of work, therefore, are to discuss the concepts of center of gravity, center of mass, and centroids, to be able to determine the centroid or center of gravity for irregularly shaped bodies, and to be able to calculate the equivalent force and its location for a di distributed load or from a height of fluid. So we're going to begin by having a look at centroids. So I have two very familiar shapes. We have a rectangle and a triangle. And we're going to define what a centroid is. So a centroid is the geometric center of a body or a shape. So and it's kind of well-known stuff from high school, but just to reiterate, that if I have a rectangle of height h and a breadth or width b, then we kind of know we can draw a dotted line. It's already on there, but I'll redo it. A dotted line through. And where the two dotted lines coming from the corners meet up in the centre is where the geometric centre is. And so we, we already know then that the... This x-coordinate for where this geometric centre is, so x bar equals b upon 2. And likewise, in the y-direction, the, the coordinates of this centroid, y bar equals h upon 2. That's reasonably well known. Also well known, but not everyone kind of knows it again. We can draw some dotted lines. In this case, we've got a triangle, so we can't go from corner to corner. But what we can do is go from corner to midpoint along lines. So corner to the midpoint along the line. And corner to the midpoint along one of the edges. And we get a point here that's in the geometric center of this body. So if we have a width B, the coordinate from this right angle of the triangle so the coordinate x bar of where the centroid is is b upon 3 and likewise in the y direction the coordinate of the centroid y bar equals h upon 3 and we can use this knowledge of simple shapes to help us then define what the centroid of a more complicated shape is if that more complicated shape is made of composite sections of less complicated shapes. So let's draw a composite shape and kind of give the game away here by how I'm drawing it. So we have a composite body that is effectively and I'll draw a thicker line. This is the outside of the body. But we recognize that this body that I've drawn, the darker line going around the outside of it, is actually composed of a rectangle and a triangle. And this is really useful for us. First of all, let's put some dimensions on there. We have a height of H, and we need a couple of dimensions here. So we have, let's call this B1 and B2. And what we'd like to know is where is the centroid of this section? So let's, can, if we know that the centroid of the rectangle is here, we know the centroid of the triangle is here, we can reasonably assume but the centroid of both bodies is somewhere in between. We don't know exactly where this is, and that's what we're going to go on to calculate. So let's label where this centroid will be. So let's call this X bar C, and where I'm using C now for the composite. And we also have dimension Y bar for the composite section. So what we're going to do to help us out is actually now break this down 
into the known bits of knowledge that we have. So draw this quickly. So we have the rectangle section, we have the triangle section. And I have the centroid of the rectangle, centroid of the triangle. And I can label this dimension x bar and I'll use a subscript of a square. And I have this dimension, which is y bar the x coordinate to the centroid of the rectangular body. And likewise, I can do the same for the triangle. And now I've got the whole dimension all the way from here. It's what I'm going to call x bar for the triangle. But I know that this here is b1 all the way to this point here. And I know that this is going to be b2 divided by 3. For the rectangle, I already know what y bar and x bar are from it being uh, a rectangle. And I'm measuring from this left hand edge. So what we're going to do to work out where the centroid is, is we're going to take moments. And so we're going to, if I had, for instance, all of the weight or all of the area, so let's call it area of the composite, was acting in this direction, I would have a lever arm of X bar of the composite. And that must be equal to the lever arms of the area of the rectangular section multiplied by the lever arm to that, which was x bar rectangle. And the same with the triangle, but I have a lever arm all the way and I have the area of the triangle. So this is area of the square and area of the triangle. So I'm going to write that down. So I'm going to write that the area of the composite multiplied by the lever arm in the x direction, which is x bar c for composite, is equal to the lever arm to the, in the x direction to the center of the rectangle multiplied by the area of the rectangle plus the lever arm to the center or the centroid of the triangle multiplied by the area of the triangle. And I can then go on further to rearrange this equation just in terms of the centroid of the composite body, which is this distance here that we're wishing to find out x bar c. So, rearranging the above formula, we get x bar c equals x bar rectangle multiplied by the area of the rectangle plus the x bar of the triangle multiplied by the area of the triangle all divided by. And now, instead of the area of the composite, I'm going to break this down into the area of the square plus the area of the triangle. And so this would give us the x-coordinate of the composite body. We also want to know the y-coordinate of the composite body. So let's just draw it on our illustration. So we have y-bar. Of the composite body. So now instead of taking moments from the x axis, what we're going to do is take moments in the y with the y directions, the y distances from there. But the formula remains exactly the same. So we can imagine we have the area of the triangle 
but all pointing in the x direction so we have a lever arm from the point where we're taking moments out of this bottom left hand corner and we get a, an identical or not identical but very similar formula for the x the y bar of the composite equals the y bar of the rectangle multiplied by the area of the rectangle plus the y bar of the triangle multiplied by the area of the triangle and then all divided by the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle so you have two formulas there and you can imagine we could extend this formula if we have lots of different bodies and we'll go on to do that later so in the next video we're going to go through this exact example but we're going to do it with numbers in there